welcome to SEER, the Centre for Energy Education and Research at the British Columbia Institute of Technology. SEER is the new uh, energy centre uh, within the School of Energy that uh, provides a home for power engineering students, mechanical engineering students, industrial controls and automation, uh, uh, electrical engineering uh, and many other programs. It's housed in the uh, central British Columbia Boilers building uh, and features three steam boilers, uh, each of which is, uh, has a very specific purpose and delivers steam to a combination of different distribution headers. It's also home to uh, the Institute's uh, hot water heating system. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a tour today, uh, looking at uh, each of the different types of boilers, including our uh, newest addition to the uh, uh, equipment here at BCIT and that's a new Nebraska boiler. We pride ourselves in this facility in particular that uh, all the equipment that you're going to see is of an industrial scale and an industrial quality. To my left uh, here is a screen uh, that is displaying what we call a Delta V system. It's uh, a DCS system, uh, distributed computer control. This uh, uh, entire steam lab uh, is managed uh, by redundant uh, digital control systems. So every valve, every sensor, every piece of equipment in the boiler can be either monitored or controlled from the keyboards uh, in front of us here today. I'm standing in front of the new Nebraska boiler here at BCIT. This is a medium pressure, 250 pounds per square inch, 15,000 pounds per hour steam boiler. It has some interesting characteristics that are important uh, for our students and important for energy futures in British Columbia. Probably most important of is that it is a multi-fuel boiler. That means that it burns uh, different kinds of fuels. Primarily we would burn natural gas, but we can also burn diesel, biodiesel, and really any hydrocarbon fuel that will sustain combustion. So to my right, is a fuel train and there's a, a number of um, multicolored lines that deliver fuel, whatever it is that we're burning, into this yellow uh, burner. We have two separate burners. This one is what we call a multi-fuel boiler, multi-fuel burner because it'll burn uh, many different kinds of fuel. We have another boiler we'll be looking at in a minute, another burner we'll be looking at in a minute that burns only natural gas. And the characteristics of that one are that uh, it burns uh, very, uh, in a very clean fashion. Uh, the emissions from that are of the order of uh, one-tenth of what would come from a typical natural gas-fired boiler. So ultra-low emissions and ultra-high efficiency. In addition to that, this boiler has some other characteristics that no matter what fuel we're burning, we can reduce the emissions. And that would be, first of all, uh, the ability to, to use hypermix steam to reduce the combustion chamber temperatures. And when we reduce the combustion chamber temperatures, we reduce the oxides of nitrogen that are flowing uh, out the flute into the atmosphere. The other way that we can accomplish this is by recirculating some of the spent fuel. So flue gas recirculation. And we have a system of pipes and, uh, and pump that we'll look at in a minute that takes about 20% of the flue gas and recirculates it through the combustion chamber thereby lowering the combustion temperatures. Once again, the objective here is to reduce the oxides of nitrogen, which we would more commonly refer to as smog. So the, this, this boiler, uh, in, a, in addition to being highly efficient, is uh, one of the least polluting boilers for its size. Now a 250 pounds per square inch, 15,000 pound per hour boiler is what would be on the small end of an industrial boiler. This, this wouldn't compare in any way with the large boilers up in uh, Fort McMurray in the oil sands, for example, but it would compare favorably with what you would expect to see in a lot of, uh, a lot of settings, uh, for example, uh, a mine or a, a gas compressor station. And boilers of this scale uh, would be used in parts of refining operations. So ultimately, the technology is scalable. Everything that happens here happens on a larger scale in a real industrial plant, like a pulp and paper plant or uh, an oil and gas refinery. To my left is the fuel train for the new Nebraska boiler. These yellow lines deliver natural gas to the multi-fuel burner. 
these shiny uh, clad black pipes deliver uh, high pressure steam and a number of the other pipes can deliver diesel, biodiesel or any other liquid hydrocarbon fuel that we would choose to burn in the boiler. Along this yellow line are two uh, precision fuel measurement devices. When we want to test the efficiency of a burner, we have to know precisely how much fuel is going into the combustion chamber. So the yellow line that we saw at the far end comes along and up into the multi-fuel burner. There's then a ring and a series of injectors uh, create a vortex of flame inside the combustion chamber and that flame can be adjusted by a number of mechanisms. We can, for example, uh, recycle some of the flue gas, up to about 20% of the flue gas, and introduce that into the combustion chamber, which has the effect of reducing the combustion chamber temperature, and that has the effect of reducing the oxides of nitrogen. Further to that, we can inject steam into the combustion chamber, and it has a similar effect. The objective here is always to get the maximum amount of heat out of a minimum amount of fuel while producing the smallest amount uh, of emissions. And this, uh, this boiler uh, is exceptional at being able to do that. So a steam boiler works by uh, heating water in the combustion chamber. There are a series of tubes that run up the sides of the combustion chamber uh, and eventually they go up into a drum at the top of the boiler called the steam drum. So the steam drum is the hottest point in the boiler and this is where we get, uh, get the steam from and it goes from there out into the distribution system. But I think more importantly in this case might be where that water comes from and the fact that this is a closed loop system. What that means is we recycle the same water over and over again. So water coming, uh, coming from the water treatment system comes into the risers, gets heated uh, on the walls of the combustion chamber, rises up into the steam drum. Uh, anything that condenses or cools, turns back into water, ends up at the bottom of the boiler in what we call the mud drum. From there it gets recycled back up into a vessel uh, up on a mezzanine behind us called the hot well. Uh, it gets tested for its electrolytic characteristics, if it's acidic or caustic and is likely to do damage to the pipes. At that point we would reject that, it would be neutralized and would go to sewer. If the water is still good, it'll go to the de aerator and because it's a soapy uh, sort of solution at this point, we have to take the bubbles out of it. That water then gets recycled, comes back into the bottom of the boiler, where it will be reheated, turned into steam, and travels out through the distribution system. Right now we're looking at the business end of, a, of the other boiler, other burner. So this is the ultra low emissions, high efficiency burner. This is a prototype that was developed uh, by Natcom out of Montreal, Canadian manufactured. Uh, it's, it's a prototype, but it's only one of its kind. We've been able to achieve uh, natural gas emissions of the order of uh, nine parts per million, which is about one-tenth of the emissions that a typical boiler would have. Behind me is a, the burner management system, the primary burner management system, which actually controls the combustion. To my left and above is a large uh, black box which we call an economizer. And what an economizer does is scrub the waste heat out of the exhaust stream. So this is, this is heat that would otherwise go up the exhaust, up the uh, boiler stack. In our case, uh, a significant amount of that heat is scrubbed and recycled back into the, uh, back into the combustion chamber of the boiler. So this maze of silver pipes behind me to my left is, are the distribution headers. In, uh, in this steam plant, we have two distribution headers, one of which delivers steam at 250 pounds per square inch, and the one further behind me that delivers steam at 150 pounds per square inch. The large horizontal pipe in between is a load condenser, and the load condenser uh, is used to always maintain a load on the steam boiler. If, there's, uh, if we have uh, the burner running and we're creating steam, we have to have somewhere to send that steam at all times. What this does is allow us to redirect the stream and send it to the various places in the plant. So for example, from the 250 pounds uh, header, the most likely destination for the steam would be to the Shinko turbine up in the electrogenerating lab where we're going in, a in just a minute. But if we had 
only 150 pound steam from one of the other boilers available, we might be sending that to our unit ops lab, to the pulp and paper lab, to the uh, industrial instrumentation lab, or any of another, uh, a few other destinations, various pumps uh, and heat exchanger systems that are available in this building and those adjacent to this plant. As I mentioned, we've got uh, three boilers in this plant, and each of those three boilers can deliver steam to these distribution headers. By opening and closing valves, we can direct the steam wherever we want it to go. Behind me now uh, is the smallest of the steam boilers here at BCIT. This is a Cleaver Brooks boiler. This boiler uh, is primarily used by beginning students. Uh, when they're using this boiler, they're learning how to fire a boiler. And of course, there's an element of risk involved. Anytime you introduce uh, uh, a gas into a confined chamber in the presence of oxygen, uh, there's potential for explosion. Uh, a Cleaver Brooks boiler such as this one uh, has been reconfigured to operate at low pressure. So uh, this one operates at around seven pounds per square inch and would actually not uh, ever be used to deliver steam to the high pressure headers as the previous two boilers we looked at do. So this boiler is, is uh, f for beginners. Uh, it's, uh, it's of lower pressure, lower uh, operating temperatures as well. And would you, we would typically expect to find this type of boiler in an apartment building or shopping center, but very much uh, still something that students will encounter when, in their careers as steam engineers. We've now moved in front of the hot water boilers here in Sear. The hot water boilers are the boilers uh, that make up the uh, heating unit of the district heating system. These boilers supply hot water to 13 different buildings, including the Factor 4 building. At this time, uh, two of the boilers are operational. Uh, op uh, boiler number four has been decommissioned. Uh, the primary difference between these hot water boilers and the steam boilers we've looked at now is the heat carrying uh, solution, in this case hot water rather than steam, has to be pumped to the various destinations. Behind me now are the, are the distribution headers for the hot water heating system we've just looked at. There are five, uh, five distribution routes that go to a total of 13 buildings including the any one factor four uh, building area on the north side of campus. Once again, what's significant about these is we're having to pump the hot water now rather than uh, with the steam systems where we allowed the uh, steam to travel from areas of high pressure to area, from areas of low pressure, I should say, to areas of high pressure. Also of note here is the insulation is temporarily off some of these pipes, you'll notice, and it's a good opportunity to look at the valves and uh, see what's underneath those multicolored insulated pipes that are normally difficult to see. We're now looking at the Schenkel steam turbine. This is a back pressure turbine, and by back pressure we mean the steam coming in from the large Nebraska boiler, the 250 pound boiler that we looked at first, comes into the turbine and spins the turbine on the way out. It's still about 32 pounds per square inch and that gets delivered to a distribution header over above the mezzanine on the other side of the wall. In the middle of this installation is a gearbox. The gearbox reduces the speed of the output shaft of the turbine and uh, prepares that shaft to deliver power to the generator. The generator being the black object on, the far, on my far right. This generator is a three phase, 480 volt generator with about 220 kilowatts of output. The turbine lab that we're standing in now in some respects represents the end of the, uh, the steam process and the beginning of the electrical process. So electricity coming from this turbine will go to uh, a number of destinations but we have another uh, electrical grid connection which will allow us to tie to a battery bank on the far end of the building and allow us to do research in energy efficiency, uh, energy transfer, uh, and energy storage. In the future, we, we at BCIT expect that the study of energy will become an ever more central part of studies here at, British, uh, at BCIT. And the reason for that, of course, is uh, development of LNG and a number of the uh, energy projects that are on the agenda of the current provincial government.